Could ivermectin treat lupus, multiple sclerosis, or even rheumatoid arthritis effectively? Hi, I'm Dr. Micah Yu, board certified integrative rheumatologist, and I get this question all the time from my patients. Today, I'll uncover the truth about ivermectin and autoimmune diseases. You'll want to stick around for this because the answer will surprise you. So ivermectin got popularized during COVID-19 because a lot of people were using it to treat the COVID infection all over the world. And no, it is not as dangerous as you may have heard. Of course, it is used for animals, but it's also used for humans and their dosages are distinct. So the media made ivermectin sound really scary back when COVID-19 was hitting us hard. However, as doctors, we've been using ivermectin for quite a long time to treat parasites in humans. I'm a board certified integrated rheumatologist and I've been treating autoimmune diseases and mystery illnesses for quite a while now. And I'm not scared to push an envelope on new treatments. So one treatment that's very intriguing that we're going to be talking about today is ivermectin. And I have patients ask me all the time, can ivermectin be used for my autoimmune condition? Because I don't want to take these autoimmune medications and I asked them why they're worried that it will suppress their immune system or it can even give them cancer as well and that's a very valid reason to maybe shy away from these medications but are there other alternative medications such as ivermectin that could potentially work so when it comes to ivermectin and autoimmune diseases the first question we should be asking is are there any high quality human studies done on this medication with any autoimmune diseases? And their answer is surprisingly no. There are currently no high quality human studies done so far on different autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis, lupus, or even rheumatoid arthritis. And I scoured the literature for you. So far, there are none, but there will be in the future, hopefully. The second question is, well, if there are no human studies, are there any studies done at all? Or are people just blabbering this off on the internet. Well, yes, I will tell you there are studies done on ivermectin and autoimmune diseases in labs, in animal models, and in the lab. So let's go over some of those studies out there so we can look at this more in detail. Because the goal of fighting autoimmune disease is to bring down chronic inflammation. So is there proof that ivermectin can bring down inflammation overall? Well, we can go back to 2008 and there was a study on inflammation and ivermectin on mice. And what the study showed was that ivermectin can inhibit LPS induced production of inflammatory cytokines. So what does that mean? There's all these scientific words in there. So let me break it down for you. So LPS is also known as lipopolysaccharide. And this is a molecule that comes from gram negative bacteria. And when this enters our system, this can induce inflammation in the body. So what this study showed was that inflammation from LPS production can be mitigated by ivermectin. So there is some proof that ivermectin can bring down inflammation. Now let's look at other studies out there. There was a study done in 2023 that looked at ivermectin and mice with rheumatoid arthritis. And what did they find? Well, looking at the study here, it's weird how they came to the conclusion that ivermectin reduced inflammation in rheumatoid arthritis in mice because they actually gave steroids in these mice at the same time that they gave ivermectin. So you can't really say that ivermectin by itself brought down inflammation in these mice. But the molecules and the signals of inflammation that brought down are the same ones that I look for when I use my medications in rheumatology to bring down inflammation. So a combination of steroids and ivermectin was able to bring down IL-17, MF-kappa-beta, and also TNF as well. So I have drugs to block some of these markers such as IL-17 and TNF in rheumatology. So that was interesting, but not strong enough for me to support the use of ivermectin in this study alone because we use steroids in this case also. And here's another study I found on multiple sclerosis and the use of ivermectin. And what they found was that ivermectin in mouse models could help with multiple sclerosis with the remyelination of the nerves. So that was very interesting. But again, 
this was a mouse model, but it does hold promise that it could be a potential treatment in the future for multiple sclerosis. And another review paper here talked about the anti-inflammatory activity of ivermectin and inhibited different inflammatory signals in the body based of course on the mouse models and lab studies as well. So overall, I'm quite excited about ivermectin holding promise for a potential use case for autoimmune diseases in the future because it's been studied in these mouse models and in the lab and it shows there's anti-inflammatory properties and that's what we want with autoimmune disease treatment. And to me, ivermectin is a low risk medication. There are not too many side effects with ivermectin. Some of the side effects of ivermectin that you need to know that it can cause potential allergic reactions such as any other drug. So if you notice a rash after taking ivermectin, that's one potential side effect. Another potential side effect is central nervous system depression and also neurotoxicity. So sometimes patients can get dizzy, be confused, be disoriented, but this usually goes up with the amount of dosage in there. And also this has been more reported in animals versus humans. And other side effects that I look for in my patients when they do take ivermectin, that their liver isn't affected by this medication. Overall, I've given ivermectin in the past for various cases and I didn't see too many side effects with this medication, but it can happen. So I want to hear from you. What do you think about ivermectin? Do you think it holds promise in the future of treatment for autoimmune diseases? And have you taken it before? Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and comment below about what you want to see in the next video. And as always, we're always pushing the envelope with autoimmune diseases and integrative medicine in this channel. So I'll be producing more videos just like this in the future. I'll see you guys next time.